Joe Zekas from YogChicago.com. I'm at the Promenade in Bolingbrook, an innovative mall with a dozen dining and drinking venues just up the road from the new apartments at the Brook on Janes. The lunch hour crowd is winding down at Gordon Biersch, a neighborhood favorite at the Brook, and I'm meeting Travis for a tour of the on site microbrewery. And we actually always have between 10 to 14 beers on draft here. Espresso dark brown ale that's seasonal. We have a winter break American pale ale that's seasonal. We have barrel aged beer here now that's always rotating and always changing. And we have uh, five or six different beers that are always on draft year round. But then we have a good five to ten that are also always changing and always rotating. We were founded on brewing German style beers primarily. Beers still get most of our malt from Germany. This is Weirman malt that we just saw. It's one of the highest quality uh, Pilsner malts and different drum roasted malts that you can get on the market. So on a typical brew day, one of these bags of malt, we're gonna take anywhere from 10 to 20 of them and lift them up into the mill over there. And it's going to go through a chute. So it's gonna take the milled barley and drop it down into the mash water that's down in here. So once we've created the mash, it's in this vessel, uh, which is called actually the mash tun. And it's basically mixing with water, set at specific temperatures, and these temperatures activate enzymes inside of the malt that break down the starches and the long sugar strains to make them more fermentable, which basically determines how much sugar is gonna be in the beer when it's done fermenting. So once that's done, it gets pumped over to this vessel. These are actually two separate vessels. The top one that works is a giant strainer, and the bottom one is basically hot water storage, which in the brewer world, for whatever reason, they like to call it hot liquor. So once, once it's been in here, then it gets strained actually back into that mash tun, back into this one, which has been all cleaned and rinsed out, all of the grain material isn't going to be there anymore. And then we add hops and we boil um, that pre-beer substance, which is actually called wort, W-O-R-T, and that sterilizes it. That also allows uh, an agent called alpha acids inside the hops to convert to isomerized alpha acids, which is what gives beer its bitterness. And so bitterness in beer and hop flavor are different. If you want the beer to taste like the hop smell, you add those after the boil. If you want the beer to be bitter from hops, you add those at the beginning of the boil. So then what we're seeing here, the fermenters, after the beer is done boiling and after that work, that pre-beer substance called work is done sterilizing and becoming bitter, we pump, we pump it through a heat exchanger, which completely cools it off. And that allows us to introduce it to the yeast. If we want to look inside here, we can't see a lot. But we basically have the cooled wort coming up through the bottom of here. Then we put whatever liquid slurry of yeast and whatnot that we you know, bought from our supplier. And then seal it up. And you can see right here where a beer is actually fermenting. Once it's sealed and fermenting, the beer so if we look here from the bottom to the top, on the top you can see an arm coming off the side and then coming down, and then coming through a hose and then we have a bucket bubbling. So actually what's happening is the yeast, the single celled organism, is eating the sugars from the grain and converting them into alcohol, carbon dioxide, and naturally occurring flavor compounds. And after a certain point of time, we end up closing this right here. And that stops the bubbling, and that allows it to build up pressure. And so we end up naturally carbonating our beer here, which makes it a little bit smoother. It gives it a richer, fuller flavor, and it's a lot better for the environment. It takes anywhere from two to six weeks for a beer to fully ferment and be finished and ready to serve. Primary fermentation is when the yeast has consumed all the sugar that it's going to consume. Then after that we use some temperatures to help stabilize the beer, to help 
offset uh, flavors that we don't want in the beer, and then we cool it completely, let it finish carbonating, and then it's ready to serve. My goal as a brewer is not to just make beer that beer drinkers love, but to make beer that people who didn't even know that they like beer, they enjoy it.